Welcome to episode 59 of your Cosmic Mama podcast. I'm your hostess, Andy Murphy. And as you will see inside, well, we're going back in time a little bit. Today, I am honored to bring on my sweet bestie, Robin Kimbrell Wiggs. I have a saying in my head of like, what would Robin do? Because she always comes forward with a courage and boundaries. And I'm like, oh my, is that how we do it? Um, I know that you'll love her as much as I do. And this is her second appearance on the podcast. We recorded this back in May when I first had an imposter that took over my Instagram account. Didn't take over, it duplicated my Instagram account. And it was behaving in nefarious ways that really pissed me off. And I really felt very violated by it. It was the first time it had happened. Mm -hmm, Great, well, now it has happened again and again and again. But in this conversation, we talk about the ethics of spirituality deal. Um, You can go back to my YouTube. I have videos from like 2010, 2013, talking about the ethics of spirituality. It has always been a big deal for me. And as you may know, last year I had a couple of people who I love who questioned my ethics and integrity and it fucked me up for a bit. Ethics is always you being able to feel safe in your spaces of exploration you being able to say that you were wrong is the always (laughs) so lots of things have changed since we recorded this video lots of things will record from wherever you're at and whatever has happened and transpired in your life integrity doesn't it's an always place um it's a necessary conversation in all ways because In our awakening journey, we're looking for places that make sense. We're looking for someone to guide us. And baby, there ain't nobody who's going to fucking guide you. It's you. You can find voices that sync up with you for a little bit, and you'll likely outgrow those. Please outgrow me. It's fine. (laughs) Totally get it. Um, There are plenty of teachers who I love who I don't resonate with anymore. They aided me exactly where I needed them. Similarly, you get to go on your journey and be honorable where the things match up with you and when they don't anymore. So uh, join us inside. We're going to go back to May of 2022. You may not even notice much. Um, The hair. Hey, hold on. Hold on. I just got my hair. Just got my hairs did. Um, But the hair back there looks pretty good too. And it was also sunshiny. So I have, um, thank you, summer baby. I feel so much better whenever I can sit in the sun a little bit and get some color. But I won't go into a tanning bed because you, not my way. Integrity. Doesn't jive for me. (laughs) Anything else you need to know? Probably not. But I just wanted to get you up to date as we join this lovely conversation with Robin Wiggs. So light a bowl, light a joint, light a candle, get yourself something to come into the spaces where you always exist. I'll see you inside. Mm. Um, I'm so grateful that we're here because this feels like such a big conversation and it feels like um, it's always a necessary conversation, but it seems like there's a different need that's up right now. So Robin, uh, I love singing your name. I love you. I love your name. I love all of you. And I'm so grateful that you're here. I love you. <laughs> uh, let's you know, have- when, when I'm on my phone and mm-hmm. I have my earbuds in and Siri says, call from and I, would you like the answer? <laughs> okay. I love it. Okay, Uh, we're going to open up some sacred space, y'all, as we welcome you here with me and Robin today, um, as we have some really good conversations around um, some of this ethics in a spiritual uh, field that much, uh, always good conversations. Thank you. And they say with each beat of the drum... Let it sync up with the beats of your heart to move you into spaces outside of your everyday. Ah, to invite spirit here. Asking spirit to be present in our hearts and in our words. Um, And for you, divine stardust, 
If there's anything that's out of alignment, if there's any red flags that come up today, we ask that you be shown a better way, a clearer way. So let us sink into a knowing outside of ego. Let us align with the ethics and truth, transparency and sincerity that we wish to be in this world. all energy today to be provided by source that you feel better that I feel better this conversation is rich in meaning and context and an application to protect your precious heart Nongsa. Um, so Robin and I today are pretty excited. I think we're excited. Uh, let me just caveat this with, uh, Robin and I have both got some sass. So we're going to do our very best to show up <laughs> with a little less sass and maybe a little more like, mm, uh, because the challenge of spirituality and ethics, uh, is up for me because uh, I had an imposter last week on Instagram. I may still have an imposter and it's hard spaces to navigate because there's only so much that we can do. Uh, so I asked Robin to come on and talk with us. So hi, love. Hi. hi. A little less sass and a little more wisdom. Uh, Use, that's useful uh, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> sass on the side. Yes. Uh, the useful wisdom. Yes, please. <clears throat> Yes, please. Um, and Robin, would you just tell us a little bit about how long you have been um, serving souls? 17, 18 years in this profession. Yes. Mm. It's something I've always known, though. Hmm. I always knew, even when my daughter was real little, maybe even before that, that when I put my hands on someone, there was a difference. Or if I sat with them, there was a difference. Say more. I could feel the shift in them. I could feel them change. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, so the first thing that comes up for me whenever you say that is I will speak into our role as practitioners is to make sure I'm fucking clean before I'm laying my hands on anybody. Absolutely. Because that's some shady business right there. Um, and one that... Um, I know Robin works with, and I know most of the people that I'm connected to, we need to take care of ourselves so we are not bringing our mess to the clients, to the healing space uh, that is paramount whenever you are considering practitioners or working with anybody. If you leave any session feeling worse, fuck the fuck off. You're allowed to stop. You're allowed to say no. You're allowed to have all of your boundaries in that. But um, hmm. it's their session and they have every right to say no and every stop. Right. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't belong to the practitioner or the therapist. And what I think is really tricky right now, because um, I was doing a bit of journaling and getting ready for us this morning, is this place of outsourcing your knowingness to someone who appears to be more knowledgeable, more spiritual, more insightful, or more advanced than you. And you're like, well, maybe I'm wrong. You're not fucking wrong. <clears throat> yeah, that was number one on my list. Oh, was it? Okay, good. You Go already there. know. You already know. Oh, that's so nice. If you think you don't, if you're trusting someone else, you're in your head about it. You're not in your heart. You're not listening to your body. You're not listening to your own innate intuition because you already know if it's the right one or not. Mm, that's so and good. There are some other like. Um, external things you can do to sort of verify what you already know. But that is the number one thing you already know. That's so good. And, 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 and we have to think about this too. If a practitioner says, oh, yes, you have to come to me. Or Eww. 
and, and I know I use this example with you a lot, Andy, is someone calls and says, um, so-and-so or someone told me I need a soul retrieval. Do you do that? Well, yes, I do. However, <laughs> there is work that comes before that. You can't just do a soul retrieval and have their life shift in a positive way. It, it just doesn't work that way. No. You have to do enough work that if there is some sort of soul retrieval or extraction or whatever it is you want it to take Mm, thank you so that that's kind of our part is knowing when they're ready for it or if they're ready for it Uh, I want to go into that, but I want to just back up for one second and say just because someone is spiritual doesn't mean that they are clean and ethical. Um, So I want you guys, when you're finding the right people, uh, yes, Robin is saying you already know, and you get to do your due diligence just like you do with anything else. Just because they're claiming something doesn't mean that they are and you find within you where it resonates as true because you already know. Um, Don't get pulled out of that knowingness because you have given them power or they have exerted power that isn't necessarily earned. And think about this too. Nowhere else in your life do you just take the first one that comes along. You always get second opinions in everything, right? Yep. Why would you not do it? This is really important. This is like It's dangerous. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. So let's just say like the importance and the danger and the urgency in this. Uh, there are good and bad practitioners of everything. There are practitioners who will steal your powers and steal your soul. Fuck yeah, they are. Um, we don't want to say that in a love and light world, but to not know that you will be naive. You will be vulnerable. You could be terribly taken advantage of. Anybody can steal your fucking power. I think your power is precious. I don't want anybody to steal it. I want to see what you do with it, which is the way that this uh, <laughs> this was designed. I want you to come online to all of you. Yes. Um, so when we talk about the practitioners who may not be ethical, it could be as bad as they're going to steal your money. It could be as bad as they're going to steal your soul. Uh, and I want there to be just a very big range on that. Not to frighten you, but so that you recognize, like, don't be a fucking idiot. They can also make your life exponentially worse than it is right now. Exponentially worse. But then often they'll turn around and use a pain point to market more to you or a point of shame. Well, if you were doing this, then you should have done that and blah, blah, blah. Because we don't do the healing. We create a space. We call in the energies and the guides and all of that, that are ready to serve you, but you have to do the work. So if someone says, oh, come on in and I'll, I'll clear everything out for you and you'll be good. Mm -mm. It doesn't work that way. Mm -mm. And I found that a lot of people that get trapped in that with a practitioner, uh, I think the number one reason is desperation. Always feel desperate. Like something shifted in their life, something changed it's uncomfortable. You feel it in your body. So you immediately go into your head. Like, what is this? I have to fix it. Something's wrong, blah, blah, blah. Someone needs to fix this for me. Desperation is the number one thing. Well, and if you're desperate, you're already powerless. You've already given away your power. So when somebody shows up that you assume to have more power than you, you're already going to be fucked. Yep. 100%. And then the second one is you think you don't know, but Mm. you do. You're, you're just up here instead of here. Uh, when you say second one, would you tell me what this uh, list of tips that you're giving us is? Huh? What? Huh? What? It's about how to know how to stay safe. Great. Finding a practitioner. Great. How Thank to you. stay safe. And, and it, number one thing, it's self-accountability. It's agency and sovereignty over yourself because nobody knows but you. If a practitioner is right for you, you could have two, three, or four people say, oh, you have to go to this one. Oh, you have to go to that one. Well, number one, you have to really consider the energy of the people that are recommending Mm -hmm. this other person. Like, 
are they fucked up? Yeah. Like, are they? Are they who you want to be and where you want to be? Are they are they in some way ahead of you where you're like, ooh, I want to know that. Who did you go to to like help you get there? Right, cool. right. <clears throat> you lost my train of thought now. Uh, when we're saying like, uh, you already know and you don't know. So we're asking about the people who are recommending this person to you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. <laughs> um, and oftentimes when that happens, and I know we trust people to guide us. You've guided me to people before and they've always been like spot on. Uh, not always. I... Hold on. Hold on. Can we speak to that? Not fucking always because I've been in my own messiness at times. So like there's, there's a growth curve, I think is just what I want to say. That's true. That's that, true. like I've made missteps uh, as a practitioner, as a uh, client, I've made missteps and they're learning opportunities there. Uh, so thank you. I just, I just want to say like, yeah, I fucked up. That's okay. And, and there have been times you've um, guided me to people and I felt into it. And I'm like, that's just not for me. Or you even spoke of your experience. I'm like, nah. I'm yeah, I don't want to go. Um, can I tell you my, I'll give one of my worst experiences with a, uh, shamanic healer. Um, uh, I don't know if she was a shamanic healer, but I remember, uh, I got there and already like it felt abusive from the moment I walked in the door. I was a young mom. Uh, I, I was young as a mom. Let me say that. I was never a young mom. I, <laughs> I was 31 when I gave birth. Uh, but I was young and naive and open in a lot of ways. And this practitioner came very highly recommended. Everybody fucking loved her. Um, from the moment I met her, she felt uh, like she was a beast of a woman and like she she just felt like a pig type of energy where there's this <laughs> uh, <laughs> like none of it felt safe to me. Um, and I remember she started like picking apart my life right away in a way that felt unsafe. She also put, sat herself between me and the door and she's like, I sit next to the door so I can stop you if you try to run. What the fuck? Um, and I remember leaving that experience. I think it was, doesn't matter. Uh, my husband had recommended and I remember leaving there and I was so upset and I'm like, why would anybody who loves me tell me to go to this woman? This was not a positive experience. This was not a healing experience. Um, and I remember this woman said to me, she's like, I like your ethics so much. I'd love to train you. I think we've had a lot of lifetimes together. I could train you. Um, and I was like, uh, get, 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 get. Uh, and what a beautiful example of where it isn't safe. I love your ethics. I would love to train you, meaning I can't wait to suck all of your yumminess out of you. That's it. And when we are naive in our spiritual awakening or in our own powers, somebody seeing our powers, oh, it makes me feel special or it makes me feel, I think special is like the first layer of it, but like there's also this like, um, I want to develop what they see in me, which I should also be a like that I thought I did, but I didn't know, but this person sees it. So I'm going to stay with this person because they keep telling me how wonderful I am. Yep. So let's be careful if anybody is soliciting you to do something next. Right. Oh, yeah. Anytime. Um, and I can think of another practitioner that I worked with, too. And she and I was like, who should I go to for training? She's like, oh, I can train you. You and I would do great work to go fuck yourself. You're gross. <laughs> There's no way. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it's that obvious and palpable. And other times you're so desperate anxious, excited to develop spiritually, that you will make a misstep. And if you do, correct it and stop. Don't keep going if it doesn't feel good, please. And sometimes it comes from that really uncomfortable feeling when we have these spiritual awakenings, these initiations, right? It comes from that. And which can be very confusing because all of a sudden mm. everything in your world no longer makes sense. Thank you. Your relationships feel hard. Your every day feels hard. You wake up not feeling like yourself, but you just feel like everything went to shit all of a sudden. So there is a desperation that can come out of that or just the need to find relief because it's a, it's a statistic. It's a fact that people will 
go further and pay more to move away from pain than to go towards pleasure. I want to just um, comment on that, that when you're in those places of spiritual awakening, when you're in those places of everything is kind of like falling apart and you don't know what the fuck is going on or what's real or what you're supposed to do, you're incredibly vulnerable. And that is the time where you spend extra due diligence finding the person who can help you please. Thanks. You're, and you're just this tender, beautiful soul waiting, waiting to awaken, waiting to, to kind of get all of this inside of you in alignment so that you understand it so that you can bloom as a spiritual being and go out in the world and let everybody feel that yep. because that's how it works. They feel, people feel, you can be standing in the grocery line and they can feel you if you're tormented or are you like loving yourself and the world around you? Mm. They can feel that. And that alone can trigger the person near you in the line to seek something else in their life. Yep. That's how it works. Well, because it's in a field, right? We are energetic yes. bodies. We are not just meat suits. Um, there's a lot of frequencies. I so hate that term. Do you? <laughs> oh my God, yes. Oh, that's cute. And bag of stardust. I hate that one too. Oh, I haven't heard bag of stardust. They <laughs> uh, <laughs> just sound so icky, like in my mouth, like gross. Well, it's dismissive, right? <laughs> of like the mirror, walking miracle that you are, Rob Ben. <laughs> I see us as, as like all these atoms and biophotons, and they're just swimming around so fast that we can't even see them and they're creating this being uh, so it looks solid but it's not uh -huh. that's nice yeah it feels better than meat suit doesn't it um <laughs> and and but it, and that's exactly the nature of it like these are energetic frequencies that are constantly yeah. um you're a moving vibration so what vibration you are emitting and feeling for yourself will affect others uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did we cover all of tip number two, Robin? You don't uh, know? Is that what it that was? was? That was like sub one and two from tip number one. Great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, and trust your intuition trust on that, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over and over. I have this thing where people say to me, like, I recognized you by your face. Yep, that is part of the fucking package. It is a cool one. It is not one that I designed consciously. It is not one that I'm trying to do. But if you have that like recognition with somebody, um, yeah. do pay attention to it, but don't give away too much power to it. Uh, and I'm thinking of that like whenever we're attracted to somebody romantically, and you'll hear this all the time, like the chemistry is just the wound activating. Um, <laughs> so it could be that way with practitioners too. read the reviews, see how they feel, watch them for a little bit before you jump into anything, please. I have people tell me often, yeah, I was looking through this list of practitioner. And when I came across your name, it went bing, or it just popped out at me. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, those are my dandelion seeds that I blow out into the world. Right. Cause that's how I think about putting my energy out there and they land where they're supposed to land and take root. Mm -hmm. Right. And the rest of them just continue to float around until it's time. Um, I might also suggest to people listen to a voice because when I hear a voice, I know if it feels safe to me versus whenever, um, you know, there's some tones of voices that I do not respond to at all. And <laughs> well, and that's my number two is talk to the therapist. Thank you. Most of them have a discovery call or consultation they should be free. It's 10 to 20 minutes. And you can ask them questions and see how they align with how you feel. How do they align with what you feel like your needs are? Um, I'm so curious about this one because I don't fucking do consultations for people. I do. I know you do. Um, and so like, I love. Well, and it's, I call yeah. it a discovery call because it's like a really short call. Yeah. And it also helps me know, do I want to work with them? Okay. Because there's a lot of people coming through that I don't want to work with. And I'm sure you have that too. 
Oh boy, do I. Yeah. And it's those desperate, like, I'm going to suck all your energy. I want you to do all the work. I'm just going to come in and lay down some money and leave. And I'm never going to change. Yep. I don't have time for that. No, those are not fun Mm -hmm. sessions whenever some, uh, and think about it with sex too. Like if you have anyone who is just like laying there and letting you, that's not fun. That's not, that's not something that's going to grow and heal and evolve. That's Mm -hmm. um, a waste of energy. So when you talk to them, do they talk to your pain point? That's a no, no. Right. Do they talk at shame or do they tell you, you just need to get your ducks in a row? Well, how about you have someone that tells you, we're going to help you like fuck up your ducks. We're going to like help you break out of that mold. We're going to help you not, not find your edges, but like go beyond your edges. Right. Because that really is when we develop a spiritual life, that's what we want. When we go through healing, we're trying to heal all of those constraints that we've been given and programmed our entire life. That's what feels so uncomfortable to us. Like they hurt now yeah. and we need to break free of them. So good. Um, I'm going to share here too. If you have someone that you want to work with like me, who doesn't offer consultations, if you reach out sincerely and you're like, hey, I'm looking for the right partner too. Um, I respond really well to thoughtful requests and emails Mm -hmm. Um, when we get to the people of like here's everything that's going on with me and then the very last line is but I can't afford anything (sighs) I fucking delete that like you have just given away all of your power to not see what the possibilities and what could expand and what magic could happen here you just like expanded and then put your story in there that can't shift then Um, so don't underestimate reaching out in a way that is sincere and showing of yourself because uh, souls recognize souls. And that's, yes. And also their time and their money speaks of their commitment. Ooh, doesn't it? Commitment to themselves, commitment to do the work, commitment to cooperate and work with the therapist based on what their needs are. Hmm. It's, it's, it's your commitment. Yeah. Well, but, and you know, I used to say I've, I've spent a lot of years doing this. And so there's a lot of marketing angles. The more I come to it right now, marketing feels like a masculine corporate <laughs> selling technique to me where I'm like, eh, I, I just want to work with mm-hmm. vibration and frequency. Yeah. Uh, but I would often say like, what's the value of your soul? Like, is your soul worth spending this money, which might be uncomfortable? And then you'll also have those clients who are like, well, I can't afford you. And yet they've got the new bag. They've got the nails. They've got the, like, they've got everything else going on. And so the value is on the outer and not the inner. Be sincere with yourself and sort that out before uh, you go in negotiating with anyone, please, because uh, you're worth it. And for me, when I speak about their commitment, it's, and you, I know both of us have experienced this, how many people get lost coming to our office (laughs) and when they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I got lost. And I'm like, it's okay. That's the hardest part getting here. You already said yes. And the hardest part was getting here. That's it. And if you can't get here, you're not supposed to be here. And I've, uh, right. as a practitioner, I've learned that the very hard way too. Of like, well, I'll, I waited one time. Did I? T- I'm sure I told you this because you've known me forever. I waited two hours for someone one time. And <gasps> it was the worst fucking session I've ever done. She left me an awful review online, um, and she ended up like going into a Starbucks to do things. And even a year after her session, she sent me another hate private email about what a piece of shit I was and how wrong I was about everything. Oh my gosh. Um, so I wait all... 15 minutes and then I'm like, I can't take you now because I have that built in, which is actually my time, but nevertheless, things happen, exactly. you know, GPS sends you the wrong way or there's traffic or an accident. So I allow for that. It's a consultation tip number two on how to stay safe. That's number, three. number three is check out their social media. Mm. How are they showing up? Like what kind of responses are they getting? Do they, do they again, market to the pain point? Like, yeah. That's- Would you give us an example of marketing to the pain point? 
Yeah, I even wrote down, explain that. <laughs> Thanks. And I'm sure you get those emails where the opening line is, do you wake up feeling horrible every day? Oh, it's something like that. Okay. It's not always that blatant, but it's that kind of thing. Do you feel like life has left you in the dust? Those are pain points. Well, we all feel like that sometimes. Of course we do. It doesn't but they're matter. almost like seeking out the victim then in that languaging it's already preying upon desperation they're they're triggering your victim yes Ooh. yeah um and so when you check out their social media do they look well-rounded are they well-rounded person do they have other things going on other than just their business although a lot of us have a business account and a personal account right um do you get a feel for them when you check out their social media? Do you love the words they use? Do you like their voice? Like you said before, are they engaging? Hmm. <laughs> I love you're saying all of this. And I'm thinking of my social media and I'm like, I don't know that I meet any of those requirements, Robin. Of course um, you do. Um, I do in some ways, but I will uh, I'll also share here. And in the sass of what we're here to uh, not do today, I saw a practitioner recently and she's doing mushroom ceremonies. And every picture was her just like beaming and so happy and so smiley. And I'm like, no, uh, there didn't feel like there was any other. Um, it felt very one sided. It felt very uh, love and light. Of course, it felt love and light. It felt, you know, my nasty way of saying it right now is like masturbation and mushrooms, girls. Like it's one of those where like I can make anything happen. Uh, yeah. And there's fucking tragedy and there's depth and there's wisdom and there's sincerity and there's like <sighs> other things that need to be worked through. So, yeah, monotone is maybe the word. She felt so monotone in marketing this like radiant joy. Like vanilla. Vanilla with sprinkles. I mean, like bless her she's doing exactly her right but it did not speak to me as a mature woman at all <laughs> you know. well and that's my next point do they only talk of love and light oh thank you we are both we are light and we are darkness and if you've ever been through a dark night of the soul you will know that about yourself mm -hmm. and you have to have that it's the balance it's the yin yang right the dark and the light which means that when you start out on a spiritual path to grow, there are going to be some hard times. You're going to have to work through some really mucky stuff. But that's what you have to do to like kind of rewild yourself, right? To break out of those things where you've been programmed and patterned and stuck in a box because it made other people comfortable. I like that idea. Healing is rewilding. Yes. I know this, this, this is why I wanted this conversation with you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and someone may come across like they meet all of these criteria. You've done all your due diligence and you feel good about this person. And then you go there and they just try to normalize you. Well, if you just do this and this and this, this will happen for you. And it doesn't. No, there's no formula there's for no being formula. a spiritually awakened being. There's no. no end game of being a spiritually awakened being. There is no final destination of your healing journey. As long as you're in a body, this is going to keep happening and you'll keep evolving and becoming lighter. And when you don't have anything else to do here, there's no reason for you to be here. So you'll go away. <laughs> right? Got that's it. what I tell my people. I'm like, you should be working on something the rest of your life, because that's why you're here. When you don't have anything else to work on, there's no reason for you to be here. You're just taking up space. Hmm. I'll keep you on my speed dial next time I loop in one of those places. And you're like, yeah, that, this, this is good stuff. <laughs> it's really good stuff. Tell me more. Um, and let, I, I want to speak into that love and light only piece, because mm -hmm. I think it is, um, there has been eras of awakening. Um, there were the people who were doing it in the 60s. There were the people who were doing it through the 70s. Uh, so we're, I, we're so blessed right now that we have multiple eras of awakening that have gone on. Um, there is certainly a 
there's nothing wrong with positivity. So let's just say that with love and light. Oh, no. Um, It's not the whole ball, right? But it's not the whole ball. Uh, They're also, likewise, just doing shadow work is not going to get you to where you fucking want to be either. Oh, God, no. Because we need to recognize um, in this place, uh, and the way that I've been saying it lately as we're in dream school, and Robin's in dream school too, uh, the way that I've been saying it is like what I'm being asked is I'm creating underneath reality and I'm creating outside of reality. And then there's Andy. So like I'm working from these extremes. So in that same idea, like you're working with the shadows, you're working with the light with equal celebration, equal love, so that you recognize it's the same, but too much focus on the dark, too much focus on shadow, too much focus on, um, oh, I know, I'm, I'm going to say it, Robin. Go ahead. I know. I was just going to say like even too much identification with a specific brand of being spiritual. So like just being a witch. Well, yes, that's great. And uh, just being a herbalist. Um, Like I think I want to acknowledge that there are all phases to it as you go through an awakening. So identifying Mm -hmm. and sticking to any one of those for too long could be a misstep. Yes. You can't let a tag or a title become your identity because it can stop your growth. Yep. Yes. Um, And that's not what you want. You want to be able to, again, you're breaking out of, you're finding your edges and you're moving beyond them, right? And if you create edges for yourself, well, how is that different than what the rest of the world did for you or to you rather? Um, The other thing that I will say to this is in finding a practitioner, look for somebody who admits they're wrong. Oh, yeah. Right? Because I can go back and I'm like, yeah, I thought I knew capital T truth back then. And as I've grown, I'm like, oh, look at little baby Andy. (laughs) Look at me thinking I knew anything. Um, So find somebody who does have that humility as well that can say, I'm wrong and I've changed and I've grown. I think with a lot of um, celebrity spiritual people, they sell one thing and they can't change out of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gross. And, And I can't tell you how many times I've been in a session with a client and I tend to like think out loud when I'm in a session with a client and I'll be like, I need some help, which can freak the client out. If you say, I need some help, but there are things come up that my human and as far as what I've learned as a practitioner, like, I don't know what to do next. This is like big stuff right here. And when I say I need help, boom, they are there. You know, the archangels, the ascended masters, my guides, they're right there and stomp that shit out (laughs) like they are on it so you need someone who understands that that they also have limits yep as to what they uh, know yeah any shaman who claims to know everything doesn't exist we don't we don't know Mm -mm. we know who to call on or to call on we know to call that's so good yes yes Yes. Thanks for letting us branch out from uh, your list. And then we're like, I know, I know. That's perfect. Also, this is something that I have come up against too and noticed. Like they'll tell you to be authentic or to use your true voice, but then it has to fit within these parameters that they decide which is what is authentic, what is true, how far you can go. They being the practitioner who's out of integrity. Thank you. The practitioner, and this is what they just brought in. Even groups, groups will do that. If you get in a group, there's always a couple in a group that try to define the limits for everybody. So Mm. your path to self-expression and healing and I keep asking my guys, I'm like, we have to come up with another word. Healing just is not working for me anymore. No, healing takes too much ownership. 
Um, yeah. And it's, it doesn't adequately describe what happens in your journey. It just really doesn't. Mm -mm. Healing is like a wound, right? You have to learn to live with your wounds. You have to learn to embrace them, but your path to healing is about, again, I'm going to say rewilding yourself, like being that you that's supposed to show up in the world Mm. because that's what you came here to do is to show up in your true energetic way, whatever that looks like for you. Well, almost, because I will say I've watched those people in spiritual awakening also be like, well, I'm supposed to tell truth that is very abrasive and that is very full of ego. So there is a subtlety. Uh, Thanks. Anything that's going to come from that place of truth for a spiritual truth, truly spiritually awakening person is going to also be tempered with love and compassion. (laughs) Once they learn that. But sometimes it's like Bill Murray said, you never know that where that line of common sense is until you cross it. Yep. So as you're going through an awakening or an initiation, sometimes we step outside, go, we go way out there. And then after a bit, we're like, that really doesn't feel good. And I was first class bitch to that other person. Right. And then we back it up because we learned just like you and I have learned through our process. Like we thought we knew everything or thought we were supposed to know everything. There you go. Yeah. And we didn't, we've learned there's a whole lot. I don't know. The universe is magnificent. How would I know everything? And why would I want to? How boring. (laughs) If I know everything, what am I doing here? Right. (laughs) Why would I still, why would I sleep if I knew everything? Here's something else too. And it kind of takes us back to that. Um, creating an identity for yourself. You can't keep going to your wounds for healing. It's like a dog that has a sore and they keep licking it to try and heal it. And it just makes it worse and it gets infected and it gets bigger. So what do we do instead? If we're not going to the wounds to heal them, you acknowledge the wound, you learn to work your way through that wound where it actually becomes an ally for you. It becomes a a part of your support system. There you go. Yeah. Instead of just going back, oh, well, this happened and I'm so traumatized. And this happened, the same thing happened. I'm so traumatized. And you you just keep going back there over and over and over and over. Your intention. Mm. I think sometimes, and I'm going to say this, sometimes the intention is not to heal it because it gives them identity. And then sometimes they don't know that's not the way to do it. They think they're supposed to go back to that wound all the time. Oh, that's nice. And keep reliving it. Mm -mm. Um, And I'm going to use Robin's words because Robin's uh, business is Alchemy of Light, which I still think is just mm -hmm, brilliant. Uh, The desire is that we alchemize the wound and we gain the wisdom from it, that we evolve the wound where, yes, this awful thing happened and here's the gift that I got from it, right? Here's that wild seed that I was able to harvest from this uh, big old divot in my earthly being. (laughs) The wisdom and the caution that I got from this wound. Yep. Because it can also help you to not have that happen again or anything akin to that. But there's also a wisdom that comes with it. It can actually, at some point, become an ally for you. Just as much as plant allies or your guardians or your angels or whatever it is that your power animals that comes to help you, your wound can also be an ally. And should be. You should be able to uh, take from that a place of taking your power back. Yes. Whoa, yeah. It shows you where you were able to reclaim yourself, your strength. That's lovely agency over yourself yeah this is so good robin thank you yes um number five i think that's it that's all i have oh that's okay great (laughs) (laughs) let's just chat now Uh (laughs) 
Cute. Give me one second. I'm going to write down 4843. I will not ask again, like, what the uh, next one is. Um. <clears throat> what was Robin's biggest misstep with a practitioner? Um, not trusting myself. Not fully stepping into... for lack of a better term, the magic that I knew I held and could help people with. Mm. I was very timid with it in the beginning. Very timid with it. Looking back, I should have just busted through the doors and said, here it is. Who wants it? Yeah. Yeah. And I let other people kind of... Um, hmm. um, define things for me like oh you can't do that you can't do that well excuse me yes i can uh they set up limitations mm -hmm. well and uh so i want to speak to the predatory nature of this awakening process um because we are in a place of uh expanding powers that you don't necessarily know about we are in a place of vulnerability and we are in a place of like everything is new and everything has been taken uh so when we see like cults cults are very good about preying upon that uh, I think within our spiritually awakening communities anyone who's talking about ascension anyone who's um, talking about any of this this is a very real place that we need you to keep your wits about you and continue uh, to vigilantly show up for yourself because yeah as we've said this giving away of power is a really slippery slope um, and when you feel like you don't know anyone and there's anyone who shows up saying i have answers for you um, i need you guys just to recognize like that is a uh, bridge that is not a destination the person with answers is hopefully going to awaken something within you where you already know for yourself. <laughs> um, not that they set up new unsafe containers, limitations, and restrictions on your reality. Right. Um, and I thank you. I'll say another piece here too, because this showed up yesterday. I don't think that there are any ready-made fucking spiritual communities that you will walk into where you're like, oh my God, I'm home. I agree with you. I think we all yeah. desire that. Yeah. I don't think that we're evolved enough to do that yet. And so if you're seeking that place that feels like utopia or that feels like soul family or soul tribe. Go back maybe. to the Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> there will be issues with humans. There will be um, challenges and recognizing that each of those challenges that's presented to you, it's a mirror of you. It's your shit always and completely. And you get to set boundaries of like, that does not feel safe and I will not be engaging there. Thank you very much. Well, and there will be places, groups, people, whatever, that will feel good for a time. Oh, there it is, Robin. Thank yes. you. Yes. But as you continue to grow, you will outgrow them, most likely. The rewilding. I'm, I'm so sometimes stumped and also delighted that you and I haven't grow, outgrown each other in, what, 10 years, 11 years? We keep growing. I know. It's great. But there are places that will feel wonderful and you want to stay there because that's your comfort zone. Mm. But how can you grow in your comfort zone? You can't. You can't. So you get what you need from them and you let them go and you find that next place that will help you grow. And then you let that go. And I love that because like the message in this is like, be brave. Commit. Uh, my friend Kendra one time said, uh, commit to the growth, not the comfort. Exactly. And it's such a big lesson because we think when we find those people that we're connected to in a group that feels really good, you will outgrow it and that should be celebrated. And if you're with a spiritual practitioner or a leader of any type of a group who doesn't want you to grow or who challenges or threatens that growth, time to fucking go. Or thinks you should stay with them forever. That they're yeah. the only one that can help you. I've always told my clients, it's good for someone else to have their hands on you or to lead you in a different direction. I don't 
know everything that you need, nope. you might need someone else. I love the idea of teams uh, rather than gurus, right? Like I want a team yes. of practitioners who have lots of different eyes and lots of different angles. Uh, and same with girlfriends, same with anybody in a place of awakening. You'll have people who are a little bit in front of you. You'll have people who are a lot in front of you. You might have people who are a little bit behind. Like that mm. expanse of it is really a blessing. And that's how we as practitioners work. We are probably just a little bit ahead of the people that come to us, right? If we're too far ahead. They're not our clients. That's somebody we can't work with. Yeah. Yeah, we can't, I, I'm not backing up to work with you. Mm -mm. And I wouldn't expect you to like come in and be on my table and pay me money and get nothing out of it because none of it makes sense for you. No, that would you're horrible. just not there yet. I mean, that's horrible. <laughs> that's no good for anyone. No. And it's a waste of their money and their time. And it discourages them from trying anything else. Um, you just brought up the money piece. And so let's just speak about this for a second, um, because I think that money is really a practitioner should be a little bit outside of what you're comfortable paying. You should not go into debt for a practitioner. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. And I think I would be, even if I really liked a practitioner and you can tell me if this holds true for you, or if you like this idea, I would be cautious about a practitioner that says buy a package of 10 mm -mm. and I'll save you $50 or a hundred dollars. Well, how do I know I want 10 sessions I with know, this yeah. practitioner? It's just like we, what we talked about before this one place will feel good for a little bit and then you'll outgrow it. Right. Yeah. Um, I do a three pack. I will say that, but my three pack, That's like fine. I feel like yes. a three is like a really good place to like get some growth. Uh, oh, okay. Anything that goes beyond that. And I'm also, I don't ever want to breed codependency. I don't ever want to breed dependency with clients. I want to always challenge you to grow in that way. I want to be challenged. And sometimes that challenge is uncomfortable. So I think, as I was saying earlier, um, you know, somebody who's going to kind of, with the practitioner that I had that just kind of dismantled my reality and made me feel really bad. There will be places in your sessions where like that is a necessary edge of growth mm -hmm. where yeah. it doesn't feel good to have something revealed to you, but hopefully in that process with really good practitioners, that revelation brings you to a sense of peace and empowerment that you know how to navigate your own reality better. Yeah. And there will even be places where it's scary, maybe, or you're just not ready to do that yet. I had a client who was in my sacred return coaching, which is different than here, buy a package of 10. This is like when you feel like you need ongoing help for a period of time, that's what this is for. Yep. And it it is designed to bring about growth. Oh, mm -hmm. that's nice. Yeah. And we go up at your pace. So I had a client that, grow in. Cool. Yes, that um, a guide showed up for her and my client in journey space wouldn't even turn around and look at her because this guide was obviously an aspect of her held all this beautiful energy that she wanted her to embody. She just wasn't ready. Mm -mm. And I'm like, that's okay. If you, if that's, if you can't do that today, we won't, but she's not going anywhere. She'll be back. That's a beautiful point to make too. There is spirit doesn't have urgency. You don't have spirit guides who are coming in like you have to. And it's like, if you have any of that pressure, I need you to know that's a human thing. That's a practitioner thing. That's a you thing. Spirit does not have that sense of time. For the most part, um, I have watched as we've gone through these last couple of years, there does seem to be a different like insistence from spirit because like either you're going to be making, making a misstep with soul path uh, because time is speeding up and dissolving all simultaneously right now. So I will say that there does at times seem to be a different sense of urgency and that urgency is for you, not against you. Right, right. And towards the end of her sessions, she was 
dancing and playing and completely embodying the energy of this being, which cool. loved her so divinely. It was just, it was beautiful to watch, but she gave herself time to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's on her time, not on a practitioner's, not because I've paid you, not because, yeah, no, I, um, I was going to say one more thing around this money thing, because it does get a little, let's see if I can find it. Uh, we'll speak about this money thing because it is what's coming up necessarily right now on Instagram, which is you should not be paying anybody money until you either have access to a calendar or at like, there's no, there's no upfront of money that needs to occur unless you are like securing something. So on my uh, booking site right now, like you pay and you get an appointment time and you get a confirmation. Uh, but without those things, Shady. You shouldn't just be throwing money out anywhere. Which kind of goes back to that point of desperation mm. and wanting someone to fix you. Yep. Because you're not tuning into yourself. You're not tuning into your, your knowing. Mm. And you're not taking accountability when you kind of throw yourself on someone like that, which is basically what it amounts to. You're not taking responsibility for yourself. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you're waiting for, um, you know, and I'm trying to think in my, you know, there, there are, of course, missteps in our spiritual awakening places. Oh, that yeah. We could have been more wise. Um, yeah, but that's where the, the pearls of the mm -hmm. lessons come in, right? Mm -hmm. if, if it wasn't challenging or if it wasn't difficult sometimes, would we remember? And we all, all want to feel special. So that's also where the predatory nature of what uh, oh, is yeah. happening here is. That's true. And or, oh my gosh, they have a message from somebody and right. they know, oh no, what do they know that I don't know? Right. So watch for the alarms. But I can also see the scenario where somebody is praying for an answer and then they get an email from mm -hmm. a stranger, right? Like that could yeah. be confusing. And when that happens, like, don't just, thanks, let me be real fucking clear about this. Don't just look on their Instagram profile. Go to their website and make sure that like everything mm -hmm. is matching because what we're watching right now in this specific scenario is like it will be a letter off. It will be like so close to what the username is. Um, so like just kind of like step outside of the app and then from the website step back into the app if that's a bit. Just kind of like cross your wires in that way, please. Yeah. To again, get a second opinion, yeah. right? Check it out. You would do that if you had a doctor. You would do that if you were having work done on your home. You should definitely do it in this world, in this arena. Um, I want to pause this part of the conversation because the entire time that we've been talking, I've been looking at the art behind you. So Robin, would you talk to me about your journey as artist? <sighs> It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's something when that I've wanted to do literally since I was a little girl mm. is be an artist. I want to be an artist or a model. <laughs> well, it is not too late for either one of those, love. <laughs> <sighs> well, I did some modeling in 4-H, so that was that was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed cool. that. <laughs> Living out all the dreams. <laughs> Living out my dreams, that's right. <laughs> So this has been this is a nine month journey. These big ones are, and it's called color of woman. It's, it's a process called intentional creativity. So we use intention in our creativity to bring about what we want in our life or to get rid of what you don't want or temper it. Mm. Um, so I, I don't, this painting right here, this one. On He's what I've been looking at. I have, um, I don't know that it's a he, excuse me. But. It's, it's a woman. Okay. Or a, let me, it's a female energy. Thank you. It's kind of hard to see cause she's mm. in the dark there, but 
But it looks like a two of cups, like right underneath her at heart. too. It's, it's a chalice, mm -hmm. which is a really important symbol for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was working on her when my daughter's dad passed away unexpectedly. What I also didn't expect was the level of grief that I would have at that. That kind of threw me for a loop and I was sick for about four weeks, like really sick. Like I could feel my life force waning. I will say as your friend, I could feel not that your life force was waning, but the, the hit that that was that you weren't expecting. Did not expect it. I know. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's all right. Thank you. So I was able to put that level of grief in the painting. There are tears all in that painting, mm. which really helped me. It helped me recover from that. Like this grief is, it made me acknowledge that it's real because he's my ex-husband. We've been divorced for 25 years, right? <clears throat> but what I also saw was that I was still holding on to, and this is one of my, I won't say a flaw, <laughs> but it probably is. One of my things is that I hold on to these beliefs or things that I think might happen, and they almost become like secret inside of me. So I was still holding on to this belief that somewhere, in our life, we could actually talk and be friends. But that never happened. And I, I now I realize that never would have happened, right? But, but doing this particular painting right here helped me with that. Mm. It helped me. And we did a journey um, when we were doing this painting and she showed up like this freaking amazing space queen she was huge she was tall and she had on this outfit that like came to her waist and it was this short flared skirt she had on these really high boots and she has this um thing around her head you can see this blue coming around her head <clears throat> and it like it like moved constantly it was constantly moving and then she has right here she has this feather coming out from her eye and every single feather was moving the whole time it was, a, it was freaking amazing I'm like whatever I ate this morning I want to eat that every day <laughs> uh, I will also say having known you for a long time the journeys that Robin does I am always like what the like this is not a woman who needs plant medicine this like the journeys that you do I have been uh like jealous is a hard one for like it's not jealousy but like envious of like you just fucking did what all the time uh you have these extraordinary uh altered experiences that are so yeah. alive <laughs> pretty trippy <laughs> she also has antlers which was one of the last things she asked for and i told her i'm like you have a I'm not going anywhere. That was cute. We had literally you froze right there at antlers. <laughs> so good. And you were like this. <laughs> that's cute. I wasn't frozen on my end, just on yours. So we'll see what the recording looks like, but that's cute. Okay. So tell us about the antlers. So she had these antlers and uh -huh. I said, are you sure you need antlers? Cause you have a lot going on here. Like she had all this, she had this feather thing and she's got these roses in here. And she's like, yes, antlers. And I'm like, okay. So when she showed up in the journey, it, she was magnificent. She was like sexy and just standing in her power and everything on her had a purpose. It was, it was amazing. I'm like, yep, mm. you needed antlers. 
Did it what does she have? Oh, she has keys. She has keys. She has a flaming heart. Oh, and there's a teardrop in the heart. That was one of the tears that came through. And a paintbrush that's a feather. Uh, what does a journey to... What does a journey look like in the process that you're doing? Are you journeying to find her? Are you journeying to an experience of you? And then she steps forward. So the facilitator, she does them differently. Sometimes we just journey in and get a feeling or um, like with our muse, we did one called the muse. We did journey in to meet our muse. Now, when you do something like this, that's intentional creativity or any type of visionary painting, you're not going to paint what you see because most of us don't know how to paint, right? Mm. But you can, you can make the essence of that. You can make a color or a form. You can make marks to represent certain things. Like if you want to bring something into your life, you, you kind of tune in and you ask what color would represent that. And you get that color on your palette and then, okay, where does it go on here? Where do I want to bring it in? And what mark represents that? That's so good. So a lot of it is just marks. And I mean, all of our paintings have faces. There's no doubt about that, but they don't have to. Hmm. It can just be some sort of, focal point um i uh, i get to take a class with robin uh here in a few weeks which i'm excited about i don't consider myself a great artist so whenever i see it conveyed this way i'm excited and i'm challenged right i, do, I don't trust my own expression to be able to move through that way uh robin's going to be teaching more classes robin's going to be teaching more people how to uh, go from that internal visionary space and bring it through as art. Can you talk to us about that? Yes. Uh -huh. So I have the one day coming up in May, still trying to decide on which day. And then in June, there will be a two day where we will actually learn the 13 steps. So this intentional creativity um, has a technique of 13 steps to bring about um, the end of a painting. Uh, I wanna speak into like, cause you keep saying the words intentional creativity. Mm -hmm. Intentional creativity is what's gonna create the new world. Yep. These are the steps, these are, these are the asks. I think that's the word that I wanna share, say right here. These are the asks of us to not just be visionary artists, but to be visionary creators of a new reality. Um, and this is one way that Robin is answering that call and participating it. And what I love is like so much of this, like f watching Robin do it, it's been for herself, right? There's a desire to share it with others only because she's had such a great fucking time doing it mm -hmm. and has uncovered in this process, like whole new worlds and expansion and pieces and aspects of healing and pathways of knowing self. Yeah. So Robin's going to be teaching, I think, from that place of like, oh, my God, I want you to come in here and experience this because, ah, is that fair? There are practitioners of this particular um, technique that they work with um, women, women who've been abused, um, people in addiction. Mm. There's just everything. There are no bounds to how you can apply this. That the process alone can be healing hmm. regardless of what it looks like in the end you have created a healing space for yourself and the less you know about painting the better because that way you allow yourself to be again with this word you allow yourself to rewild that creative part of yourself Mm. so many of us shut it down uh the other thing that you just said that i love is through the process of creating art you're creating your own healing space yep 
you're creating a container and a place that this thing gets to uh, ex- be experienced and rewild and expand mm-hmm. its boundaries. And it can it can live right there instead of like, particularly if you have a challenge or there's something you need to address or heal, put it on the canvas. Yeah, get it out of you. Live there. Well, and this is when we were talking about the wounds earlier, and people want to keep going back to the wounds, like fucking paint that shit, get it out of your body, like put it over there, please. So Mm. I'm going to share this experience. A few years ago, I was in a weekend painting class with Catherine Skaggs. Mm -hmm. And she had us on, I think this was our first canvas that we started out on. And I knew virtually nothing about painting other than I just have to paint. I love painting. So she says, okay, she tells us something to the effect of all those things you have inside. I want you to take some colors and put them on the canvas. And I want you to just do this, right? I had black and I had red and I had yellow and I was <laughs> like this. It felt so good, but I looked up and everyone had these beautiful blue palettes and green palettes and mine looked like hell, like, like I had taken the bowels of myself and put on that. Cool. It was amazing though. It was amazing. I'm like, oh, these people have done that before. Well, and for me as a viewer of art, not as a creator of in that form, I'm always much more interested when the pain is expressed than when something's pretty, like a pretty picture. I'm like, yeah, that's one of the main things is you can't get too precious with these Mm. because there are so many layers and I guarantee you, whatever you put on there, you're going to end up covering it up. Oh, interesting. So it can't get precious to you. You have to use it as a portal to whatever your intention is. And that's what they're, they're basically portals. And usually we paint on the very first layer. First, you write your intention on the canvas. Hello, you're coding it in, right? Wow. Yeah, cool. And then you put colors and then you move them around and make a portal. Duh. <laughs> and that's the base. That's the base of your finished product. Mm. It's so powerful. It's just so powerful. Well, and it's so um, illustrative, right? Like there's layers to this. There's expressions of this. There's intention behind all of this that you get to see what comes to life through you. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to do your class. I'm pretty excited. Can I tell you about my dream last night? Yes, please. I've been waiting the whole time. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, And you guys, so uh, we're in week number, well, we're essentially like in uh, the second section of seven sections of dream school. Um, So dreaming for me has not always been my strongest gift. Uh, the more that I go through dream school, the stronger it gets. But last night I had fucking outright Robin Kimbrell wigs dream going on. Okay. Uh, (laughs) hold on. I just want to get that image in there. You and I were at the ocean and as I'm staring out over the waves, I'm seeing, um, either sunrise or sunset. I know they say it's specific. We can remember what that was later sunrise or sunset. And then all of a sudden I start seeing these new colors on the horizon. And as I look a little bit closer, I can only look through my phone. I can't look and just like see it, but they start looking like I can see structures and I can see people moving in the structures. And it looks like the very best way I can say this is the Starseed Oracle deck (laughs) created by, and like, it's like buildings like that, but I have to like keep looking at my phone. And so you and I are having this conversation like, oh my God, do you see that? Do you see that? But it was literally, uh, as I, you know, have sat with it, a few hours today, peering through into another world. It was being able to see new colors, new buildings, new shapes, new activity going on in this world, which has uh, been my personal prayer over here for a little bit. Like this constant death, this constant shifting is hard. Like, can you guys please give us just like a little peek into what's to come? And so last night felt like the first answer to that. There it was. Wow. Wow. Um, do you miss living on the ocean? Because I wondered that as I was writing my dream this morning too. 
It's funny because I've been thinking about the ocean this week too. Funny you would have that dream. I love the ocean. I mean, who doesn't, right? But the mountains, that's where my heart is. Okay. That's because I think about it a lot. I'm like, should we move somewhere near the coast? Should we? I, I can't imagine not being near the mountains. Hmm. I, I like to go visit the ocean. Mm-hmm. Well, you've gotten to live there too. So I, I can claim for myself, like I've done mountains. I'm ready for ocean. It's <laughs> well, and we didn't live on, we lived in the middle of the state, although, you know, an hour and a half to two hours either way. And we were at the ocean. So, wow. But hmm. now the mountains I'd like to be in the ocean with you. I'll say that, like just being with you there last night. Yeah. uh, It felt really fun to uh, experience that with you. And isn't it the beauty of like friendships that go on forever? Like, oh, there's still a lot of things that Robin and I haven't done together. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. (laughs) Yeah. These past two years, I've, I've thought a lot about that. I'm like, oh, this can't come to an end. I'm not ready for that. (laughs) Did you think at some moments that it might? Mm-hmm. I did. Did you think it was out of your control or did you always get a say? I kind of felt like there wasn't any other choice. Okay. Sometimes. Except to stay? That that we would give up our space, that we wouldn't work together in oh cute no i went somewhere totally different um oh, i'm okay. talking about did robin think that she was going to leave the planet at some point in the last couple of years just when i was sick in february i thought about it yeah uh-huh. I thought, oh this is what it feels like when your life force leaves you hmm. but you felt like it was in your you had say over it it wasn't just going to be taken there was a period of time that i did not feel like that and i but I think once I realized what it felt like, I'm like, uh, no, okay. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. Um, no. But it was also a big part of processing all that grief. Like that's how deep it was. I'm like, this is some heavy shit right here. Yeah, we can get, yeah, that, that grief can wash us off the planet, huh? That was the worst, which I find really weird because I've lost people who meant much more to me (laughs) and I hate to say that much more to me than him but but I mean uh so we have very similar exes uh (laughs) which y'all don't know but Robin and I do um yes and I think yeah like the grief of it is the grief of like how much time we wasted or what was lost or what could have been that they couldn't step into yes like the finality it. of it feels uh big and scary because i always felt like he and i came together it's completely off our original subject that he and i came together to do something amazing i always felt like he was very intuitive or psychic or empathic but I think it scared the crap out of him. Mm. And then somewhere along our journey, he just went, mm, nah, I changed my mind. That's what it always felt like to me. Mm. Yeah, I don't have enough perspective on my ex yet to know. Yeah, it's true. You don't. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just grateful every day <laughs> to not be in it, <laughs> which is a good right. place to be six years in. I'm like, fuck, God. Oh, thank you. Uh, I want to just close out the other piece that we were saying, which was about Robin and I have been sweet mates and shared uh, office space for 10 years. 10. Um, so our lease is coming up in September and it's we just kind of keep being in this place of like, uh, hmm, uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Because, yeah, uh, we know that working together we had this experience uh what day was it was it the neptune jupiter 
I think it was Neptune, Jupiter, yes. that conjunct day that I talked about a little bit because it was so freaking good. Like we were doing, I was doing big healing with my client in my office. Robin was in her office and Robin was doing singing bowls like right when I needed it. There's this beautiful synergy and love and support. Um, and when I say it that way, Robin, like I understand that sharing space might be a real logical thing, but I also love the way we get to like support in that way too. That's kind yeah. of fun. Mm -hmm. I know. And our plants even talk to each other like they need water. <laughs> they do. They really do. Um, one of your paintings was talking to me through the wall today or yesterday. Um, so yeah, like there's, there's our space. If you have not been there, uh, maybe you want to schedule something with one of us before September because <laughs> we don't know what I'm happens sure beyond what's then. Happening after that. Um, the energy there is it's temple. It is which was our original design. That's why we painted the rooms like we did. It's mm. like walking into a temple. Oh, those rooms. Yeah. And anyone that comes in the first time, they're like, oh my God, this is beautiful. It feels so good in here. Nicole BZ uh, does share space with me from time to time. Uh, and she's back in the office after about eight months, not in the office. She's like, I forgot how good it feels in here. I'm like, yeah. Uh, I haven't, I haven't traveled enough recently, but yeah, anytime that we step away, like the office has its own energy. It has its own, uh, personality. It shifts at times. It participates mm -hmm. at times. So Robin's art classes will be there, mm -hmm. which I'm really, um, I'm excited to participate, but I'm also happy that our space gets to host us yeah. that because the space loves to, uh, play with us in ways. Oh yeah, and the and the energy in there has expanded in the last two years because before it was just you and me, and we oh. really guarded and protected it, and then we were kind of asked to open it up. Yeah. So you have Nicole in there, and I have Jennifer in there, mm -hmm. and that was really that was particularly hard for me. It was harder for me than I think it was for you. Well, um, I knew who I was inviting in and I trust, like I knew her energy already and yeah. I trusted her. Um, and I think that didn't even matter to me if, if this had been someone that I knew personally, it, it was just, it's just sharing my space. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of that way. Like, out of my space. <laughs> oh, we're both cancers too. So there is that place of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to work around you. <laughs> uh, Robin and I both have singing bowls. We have lots of drums. We have several rattles. Uh, we play them interchangeably. Like I'll go into Robin's office and play and she'll come into my, like there has <laughs> been this lovely, uh, it's a gift. It's a gift to be able to share it with you. It's a gift to be able to know that if I'm looking for an oil and I can't find it, I'm like, hold up, <laughs> I can go into Robin's office and Robin, find one. And I'm going into yours. So I'm like, does she have any rose oil? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. And crystals, different crystals. Oh, so many crystals. Yeah, I was thinking about the citrine. Uh, yesterday was moon Jupiter conjunction, which is huge prosperity portal. And they're like citrine. And I'm like, oh, uh, I'll, I'll use. The so I charged up our citrine at the office, which is this huge pillar of it. Mm. Got that charged up with some prosperity blessings yesterday for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. I didn't realize how much I missed it. I think I stayed away a lot during the last two years on purpose, trying to make it easier for me if I had to let it go. But then when I went back in, I'm like, oh my God, it feels so good. It feels like so I good. can't imagine not having it. I just can't imagine. No. Uh, so you guys who are listening to our love fest with a physical space, uh, any prayers that you want to put out there that we could continue to be there um, in a way that is uh, within our means, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is easy for us because we have been exceedingly blessed with landlords who have been very good to us over these past couple of years yeah, and it's angels yeah. it's an office complex where like yeah you're you think you're walking into insurance agencies and then you turn the corner and step into our space and most people will gasp in some mm -hmm. uh manner or other at what we've held here yeah it's true and i think in that way to me it's always been clear that it's it's a 
blessing and a benefit to our city and our community as well. I agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to think that when somebody walks in there and they feel the energy, like half of my work is done. <laughs> Like whatever else I have to do is super easy because the space already did it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So uh, in this place of rewilding, yeah. our uh, our outer limits are being stretched with office space and with continuation of our practices over the last couple of years. So mm -hmm. when, um, when I bring people like Robin onto the podcast, I would love for you guys to fucking book some time with her because she is one of my favorite people. And this is part of the reason we do it. And I would love for you to book some time with me if I'm the right person. So um, I don't feel apologetic or shame at like, hey, we do what we do and we love it. And yet we are also in a business where we constantly have to have people coming in. Yeah, yeah, that is our livelihood. Yes. It is our livelihood. It is, um, it's our gift, it's our joy, it's our service, it's our passion, mm -hmm. it's, my um, service. And it's our service and it's our job. Um, Which is my intention at the base of this uh -huh. painting is to be of service. And to bring joy, freedom, and financial independence to mm. my beloveds and to myself. Ong sa. Ong sa. Um, you can find Robin. Would you give us uh, your Instagram and your website? Instagram is at Alchemy of Light. Just straight out. There's no little dashes or dips or anything. Um, my website is alchemy333.com. Um, Facebook, Alchemy of Light, or you can just find me, Robin Kimbrough Wings. Yeah, Robin's on Facebook a lot more than I am. So, uh, yeah, if that's a place, um, and are you still doing your coaching? I am sacred right. return coaching. Yeah, it's so beautiful. That was a gift from spirit, even the name was a gift from spirit. Isn't everything we do a gift from spirit? Like, I don't, uh, I don't know if I ever have a fucking original idea over here of spirit. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. I might okay. think it's my idea, but yeah. Yeah. That one was, that one just, that was a download. I'm like, whoa. Okay. Let's do that. And when we have those that we say yes to that also, for those of you who are practitioners or aspiring practitioners, you don't have to say yes to every project spirit drops in because not all of them will feel. But when your vibration rises in that way, you're like, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones. Very much so. Yeah. And if you don't pick up on something, it'll float out into ethers and somebody else will if yep. it's meant to come into form. There's That's how it works. I think all creation and inspiration is that way like it's just looking for an outlet to get into the world um i see my business that way too like rock and roll shaman just wanted to be in the world and i was the one who was mm -hmm. uh sassy enough to think i could live up to rock and roll shaman <laughs> well and when alchemy of light came in i'm like i'm not even sure i know what that means but the longer it stays with me the more i understand um mm -hmm the depth of alchemy and how, how important that is to our growth and to what we're trying to do in the world, that everything is about the alchemy of it, um, the alchemizing of it. What I also just want to acknowledge here for both Robin and I, we don't identify as our business. Um, the business is separate from us. It's hostisted by and through us. But I think if uh, either of us ever identified as, uh, that could get a little tricky. Ego could get a little uh, yeah. keyed no. up. They, they have their own um, path. <laughs> their, their own like energetic form. Yep. Like, they're, like they're a being separate from us. Yeah. Mm. With their own ideas. Oh, pl plenty and their own prosperity. Like that's what I've watched too. Like there's a, there's a different uh, frequency to all of it. So Robin, thanks for the generosity of your time and love. I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> love fest, love fest, love fest. Uh, yeah. And here's to another 10 years together. Yes. 
please and thank you. Okay, love you guys. Mm -hmm.